So I've been thinking a little bit about these uh, these Southern Seminary video responses to uh, Dr. Fuller when he made some accusations about the seminary and about how things are run and about social justice and about, you know, liberalism in the seminary and stuff like that. And so what Southern Seminary did was they put out these videos and of each with each of the professors that were that was specifically named in the Dr. Fuller revelations. And they put out these videos where they were interviewed and each video was exactly the same. You know, you have this interview, it starts off, well, tell me about your testimony, you know, that kind of thing. And some people like that stuff. I don't really find it helpful because, you know, the reality is that every heretic has a testimony as well. I mean, th th that's just a fact. Every heretic also has a testimony. So I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to make it seem, well, see, he's a Christian just like you. I mean, it's fine, but it's really not helpful. So usually like five to seven minutes of the uh, interview is just wasted on on that kind of thing. And then the interviewer will ask questions that are sort of related to the accusations that were made, but actually don't address the key issues. It would be like, I would, I've been trying to think of what this would be like. It would be like if somebody was saying a whole bunch of communist stuff, like they were saying, oh, you know, from each according to their... Uh, according to their means and to each according to their needs or something like that. Is that, is that the quote? I mess up. I'm probably messing that up. It's early. But anyway, if they were saying a bunch of communist, communist stuff, like, you know, we need to have uh, equal, uh, you know, salaries for all and, and all, all kinds of stuff that's just typically associated with socialism and communism. And then you, and then, and then in response to, to, to the people making the accusations there, and it's not just accusations that come out of nowhere, in these cases, we have videos that say have you saying things that sound communist, and we have your your writing that sounds pretty communist. And it's like, well, I mean, if it looks like a duck, it quacks like a duck, it's probably a duck. And then in response to that, because you're the seminary that's trusted for truth, what you do is you say to the person that was accused using their own words of, of, of spreading communism, you say something like this. Let me ask you a question, Dr. Communist. Is communism compatible with Christianity? And then they say no. Oh no, communism's not compatible with Christianity. And then you ask them why, and they say, well, because communists in the Communist Manifesto it says that God doesn't exist, so therefore it's not, you know, compatible with Christianity. And it's like, you know, th that's that's the that's the most weaselly, dishonest. It's it's a, it's a snake move. It's a snake move. Because nobody was claiming that you were a communist because you agreed that God didn't exist. We were saying you're a communist because you're saying communist stuff. And here's the examples. We have a list of all this communist stuff that you're saying. So this has nothing to do with it. So why are you asking questions that are irrelevant to the issue? Like the Matt Hall one is the one that I'm most interested in because I just recently watched it uh, just just a few a few days ago, as you can see. And it's like, they, they, they were just beating around the bush, not asking the direct questions. He said, well, is critical theory compatible with Christianity? Nobody was saying that Matt Hall was saying critical theory was compatible with Christianity in its entirety. What we were saying was that he used terms and ideas that are directly from critical theory. And those specific ideas and terms are incompatible with Christianity. So you need to ask them about that specific statement, those specific documents, that specific dissertation, stuff like that. And that's and, and they failed to do that. They failed to do that. It, it, and I think that people started to notice this. If you look at the videos that they put out, the very first one is here, the one with Dominic Hernandez. That one got 14,000 views. The next one was with Chad Pennington over here got 9,000 views, and then the other two got 7,000 views, roughly. So people were less interested as they went on. And I think that the reason why is because it's like, well, obviously, we're not going to get any answers here. This is just obfuscation. This is just muddying the waters further. Muddying the waters further. I just don't get why you would do this. this actually, I do get why you would do this, because you are looking to confuse people. I know you say you're trusted for Truth Southern Seminary, but but the, these videos that you produced, these four videos right here, and these are just the opposite of helpful. Like if you want to further confuse people, do stuff like this. Ask irrelevant questions, not direct questions. Don't actually respond to the exact quotations that we pulled from your stuff and things like that. Yeah, they did a little bit of that. But again, 
softball questions all day long. It's like, it's like, okay, so you said this, now you believe this. Okay, what, what changed? See, that would be actually helpful to the body of Christ because nobody cares if you change your mind on something. Like, like Christians are very forgiving. It's not like we, once you believe something, you have to always believe it for the, for the rest of your life until you die. No, if you changed, that's fine. I've changed on things. I used to be a, a credo Baptist. I'm no longer a credo Baptist. And I, I can explain to you why I changed. I can explain to you how that progression happened for me, why I see certain passages in Bible differently. Like, like that would be super helpful to the body of Christ. This is not helpful. This is propaganda. When you interview Dar- Jarvis Williams, that's propaganda. It, it doesn't serve to con- clear up anything. All it does is confuse people further that are honestly asking questions. And it serves to really protect the guild is really all it tries to do. I don't think it's going to work. I mean, you can keep making these videos if you want. I think it actually helps my cause more than yours. Um, but I, I, I actually do care about the truth here, and you claim to. So, so you know, as far as strategically, keep making this kind of content. It helps me. It helps me, and it helps my buddies. But um, I care about the truth more than I care about my content. You know what I mean? More than I care about my YouTube career. So I, I would prefer if these questions well, these interviews actually answer the direct questions. That would be helpful. Until you do something like that, I don't understand why anyone would trust you for truth. Uh, seriously, I, you say you're trusted for truth. Okay, great. That's a nice slogan. But you actually have to do the work in order for us to believe you on that. Like this is, it's sad. It's sad because, you know, so many good people do come from Southern Seminary. And I, and I so much about what Al Mohler does and says, I, I really appreciate. But this kind of stuff, man, this makes you look shady. It makes you look weak. It makes you look like you have something to hide. And I, and I know enough to know that you do have something to hide. I know what goes on with this social justice stuff. Absolutely. Uh, maybe we'll go into this content more, and I'll tell you what I mean. But, but I don't know. I don't know if that, that's helpful. That's, that's how many of us are thinking about it, like about that little example I used about, about communism. Um, anyway, I hope you found this video helpful. God bless.